Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our risk management school. My name is Stephanie Arango, and I'm a member of the Pirani team. I'm excited to be here with you today to explore the theoretical and practical aspects of the different topics that we will share. To help us go into the session, we're happy to have Alejandro Orrego, um, who's our CEO at Pirani. Hi, Alejo. It's great to have you here. How are you? Hi, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me again to the risk management school. <laughs> Of course. Well, before we begin, um, I want to invite everybody to continue learning about risk management by visiting the Pirani Academy, um, where you'll find valuable learning materials. So I'll go ahead and leave the link in the chat so you guys can see the website. So give me two seconds um, and paste it here. I can't. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. And then finally, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to ask them through the questions and answers in the section here. Um, and we'll be happy to answer you at the end of the webinar. So now let's go ahead and begin this topic. Over to you, Alejandro. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. And again, thank you everyone for joining this risk management school. And today we're gonna talk about risk management culture. Uh, this is uh, a topic that I'm really passionate about. And I think, of course, I'm, I lead a, a risk management software company, but a company can have the best software in the market, but if they don't have a risk management culture, unfortunately, they, they really won't achieve any goal of the uh, company. So I, I really, really want to talk about this, this topic. Uh, so thank you for inviting me to talk about this in this session, this class. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about what is culture in general terms, the ABC model, uh, corporate culture, risk culture, what is not risk management culture, how to design a strong risk culture, the IRM risk culture aspect model, we're going to see signs of good risk management culture and the three lines on defense that is a good tip to, to achieve that. So before we start, we're gonna, I'm going to tell you that, of course, we're going to share some information about the risk management culture based on my experience, but also uh, I take notes of a big reference for me in this specific matter. The first is the IRM reports uh, from the, the Institute from Risk Management. Uh, they launched these two reports on 2012, like more than two, 10 years ago, but I really think they are still very re relevant. Uh, I'm gonna put in the link in the chat because these two reports are completely free to download. And I really, really recommend you because they are they have really good information. I also want to share uh, the knowledge that I have learned from Mr. David Hilson. He has a YouTube channel, is the Risk Doctor, and also a, a, web, a website. I, it's a huge reference for me as well. So I'm gonna use some of the information that he uh, that he shared in his channel and in, on, on his website. I'm also uh, from Jonathan Chino. Jonathan Chino is an enterprise risk management consultant. He works from one of our clients in Latin America, Liberty Mutual. And he also shared his knowledge in the Pirani Summit uh, last year. And he also shared his knowledge in, in a podcast uh, from us in, in Spanish. And I, I really think he's a very, very good speaker. And he has a lot of knowledge about this topic and also have learned a lot from him. So I want to thank these three references. And I want to let you know that I'm going to use the knowledge that I also have learned from, from them, right? So to begin, what is culture? Because if we're going to, to speak about risk management culture, it is good to start from what is culture uh, from the beginning. So uh, I have four definitions and I, I wanna know what definition is better or what 
definition you like the most, you can put it in the chat, one, two, three, or four uh, in the chat. Uh, the first one from your Hofstedt, I don't know if I'm pronounced cor correctly, the collective programming of the mind which distinguishes the member of one group from another. The second, uh, a pattern of shared basic assumptions that the group learn that has worked well enough to be considered valid, passed on to new members of the correct way to perceive, think, and feel. Third, the set of important understanding, often stated that members of a community share in common. And four, this is one of my favorite, what happens when the boss leaves the room? What definition do you think it fits the most from you? Okay, Petilia says number three, very good. Uh, so, and in the IRM report and where Mrs. M Mr. David uh, Pilsons uh, combines uh, the, 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 the four definitions in one simple for follow up of us and i think it's very good is the values beliefs knowledge and understanding shared by a group of people with a common purpose that is culture and, and again that definition applies to uh i don't know uh a country culture or a group of people that or, or uh, et ethnics, or uh, within a specific uh, city, or within a specific uh, enterprise, right? So this is definition of what we can say is culture. So where does culture come from? And this is the ABC model that I want to share with you also that came from the IRM report, the ABC model uh, talk about the first, the, 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 the C is from culture and the B is from behavior. And it, it says that behavior forms culture. And the A is from attitude and attitude shapes behavior. And then culture influences attitude and behavior. And this is very, very good a way for example, what culture means, because uh, another thing that is says that is only behavior is visible, but the attitude is the way we face things and behavior is the way we act and that forms the culture. So I really, really like this, this ABC model and diagram. Uh, again, attitude, behavior, and culture. And we also want to talk about corporate culture because before we are talking just about culture in general, but we need to talk about corporate culture, how we can understand the culture of a, a company, of an enterprise, because maybe i don't know it, it, all of you are working for companies or so how can we translate these concepts of culture to the company so if we need to transfer that is corporate culture refers to the shared values beliefs behaviors and norms that characterize the internal environmental of our organization it encompasses the company's mission, expectations, and the way employees interact with each other and with stakeholders of outside the organization. Corporate culture can influence how employees perceive their roles, how decisions are made, and how the organization responds to challenges and opportunities. So again, we see the concepts of values, beliefs, behaviors, and the way the decisions and attitude to a situations and the results in line with company expectations. So it's also very important to understand what if the company, I mean, every company has a culture, even if they have it in a, if, even if they don't have 
in a presentation or or a posters or even if they don't have declared the culture in their in something in the website every company has a culture some of the companies declare the culture that they want to have and you can have a risk management culture if it's not immersed in the corporate culture and this is something that we also want to share because maybe you you, you declare a corporate culture your values your mission your vision or your purpose or whatever framework you're using for your corporate culture but if your corporate culture doesn't talk about risk maybe you don't have a risk culture at all or you can say that you have a risk management culture but it's not in the corporate culture at all so if your corporate culture talk about agile or innovation and risk maybe you have a risk management culture and that's the good way to start so risk culture is in a specific culture within the corporate culture it is the way we decide and act in the face of the risk or company faces so what is risk management culture if we define the culture in general if we define a corporate culture so in this another layer we can say refers to values beliefs knowledge attitudes and understanding about risk shared by a group within an organization it influences the decisions and behaviors of individuals and teams when addressing risk a strong risk management culture promotes an environment where every employee understands the importance, the importance of risk management and plays an active role in, in identifying, communicating, and addressing risks to achieve the organization's objectives. It encourages open communication about risks, lessons learned from past experiences, and continuous improvement in risk management practices. Uh, so that's the way we go from the general definition of culture, corporate culture, and risk management culture. As you, as you can see, it share a lot of stuff like values, beliefs, knowledge, but also uh, every employee understand the importance of risk management. Communication is key. So let's gonna check. Based on this definition, what is not risk management culture? Because when we talk with some of our clients or, or partners or consultants or whatever, oh, how, how is your risk management culture is doing in your company? So, oh, it's great. I, I just hire a, a, a company to have a, a training. So what is not risk management culture? It's not training or it's not guides, or if not procedures, or if not game and activities, if not encouraging messages of risk. These error elements are parts of, are tactics of risk management culture, but it's not risk management culture. Uh, uh, here, I think Thurman put a, a comment in the chat. So this means those at corporate in McDonald's have the same mentality about risk as a cashier. Well, I don't know if it's the same, but I mean, they they need to share the same values and, and aspects of what they're gonna do about risk. So it is definitely maybe it's not the same uh, actions in on an everyday basis, but they need to share the same values, beliefs, and knowledge. Definitely. So because you if you say that your company want to make risks, I mean, they what kind or what is your risk appetite? So we're gonna see. We're gonna uh, let. Uh, talk about this in a in a moment but yeah definitely you can ask for uh cashier something different uh, as a, a different value 
that you ask him for for the VP or or, or something in, in the in the higher hierarchy. So based on that question, let me go with how to design a strong risk culture. Uh, so designing a string, a strong risk culture requires a comprehensive approach that integrates risk awareness, understanding, and management into every fabric of the organization. So the first uh, tip or the first step will be top-down commitment. Leadership mod must demonstrate a commitment to risk management. This commitment will set the tone for the rest of the organization. Leaders should actively communicate the importance of risk management and embed, and embed it into strategic decisions. And that applies for to culture and corporate culture. You can say, okay, we should we need to have risk culture and a risk of mitigating risks or facing risks or whatever is your concept of risk, but the the concept of the CEO is different from the, uh, I don't know, the operators. You, you should have, you should share as a leader, what is your vision? What is your uh, definition of risk? And what's the risk approach that you want to give to the company? So that, because maybe you are, are the risk manager of the company and you have a strong vision of what the risk, uh, what risk, should company take but if the ceo or if the board didn't believe in that mm, you're gonna have a very bad time trying to have a risk management culture so the the leadership is very important they put the tone on the risk management culture second clear risk appetite define and communicate the organization risk appetite which is the level of risk the organization is willing to accept in pursuit of its objectives. This provides a guideline for decision-making at all levels. Uh, this risk appetite chains from one company to another or even from one area to another. I mean, there are specific aspects like anti-money laundering. You don't have an appetite in anti-money laundering you can accept that risk, right? <laughs> but in operational risk management, uh, you can accept a specific risk. You can go after some specific challenges. And this is very important. Uh, are, are, is your company willing to face risk? What are the risks that you are willing to accept? and to run because a company that didn't take risks is a company that actually don't grow. So what is the risk appetite that your company has? You as the leader has clear, had clear appetite and you share this appetite with the organization in every uh, area or team. Three, integrate risk into decision-making. Risk consideration should be part of everyday decision-making, not just a separate activity or checking. This integration ensures that risk is naturally factored into decisions, projects, projects and processes. Are you asking your team, what risks are you taking this week? Or what risks are you going to mitigate next week? Are you talking about this or you never talk about risks at all in your company? That will be a, a main question to ask. Next, continuous education and training. Yeah. Of course, this is important. When I say risk management culture is not just about uh, a, a training that you have one hour in a year, mm, it's better to have one training that don't have training at all, but it's just a part of, okay? so. It, you should educate your team, regularly train employees on risk management concepts, tools, techniques. Even if you're doing just for regulatory, the regulatory change every year in some countries, or even if you're doing for 
growth or to thrive give your team members give your employees the tools and the knowledge that they have that, that they, they, they need to 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 improve this risk management culture five open communication again you should foster an environment where employees feel safe to communicate risks, concerns, and potential issues with a fears or retribution. Feedback mechanisms, such as suggestion boxes or anonymous, anonymous reporting tools can be helpful. Six, define roles and responsibilities. Uh, we're going to see this in, in a while, but the, the three lines to defense is, is very good. Or it, what for in the last topic that we that we talked about it what is the role in risk management from the cashier in mcdonald's for instance how can you manage some risk how can you deal if someone is violent in the in the store they have the knowledge they have the the they know what behavior we expect from them or they or, or we not. Uh, cashier might know what time to lock the doors so they can clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, seven, reward and recognition. Recognize and reward those who actively participate in risk management, whether by identifying potential risks, suggesting mitigations, or improving the risk management process. Uh, it's like, I mean, we are like, I'm sorry to say this, but we're like animals. So we need recognition. We need reward. When we're doing something right, it's good that somebody tell, telling us that we do something good in order that we keep doing that good. So it, it seems obvious, but some of companies never do this. So reward and recognition. And last, no, this is not the last. It's actually 13 tips. Eight, regular risk assessments. Some companies, some clients of ours do the risk assessment at first, at once in a lifetime. That is not good at all eh, because risk changes. So conduct routine risk assessment to identify, evaluate, and prioritize risk. These proactive approaches help ensure that organization is always prepared and aware of potential, potential challenges. Nine, feedback loops. Create mechanisms to learn from both successful risks management and instances where risks weren't effectively managed. Okay, sorry, both incident reviews or lessons learned sessions can provide valuable insights. Uh, we learn not by reading some slide. We we learn by speaking about it. We're talking about it, and uh, what we learn, what we what we fail and what we learn from the failure. That is very, very important in a, in a culture, whatever it, it, it is the name. 10, adaptability. As the external and internal environment change, so will the risk. Ensure that the risk culture is flexible enough to adapt to new challenges, tools, and methodologies. Again, the world is changing every day, every month. So. The thing or the risk that we declared two years ago, maybe is not relevant today, or maybe we need to update it. Uh, so we need to work on that. And 11, tools and resources. I mean, it seems obvious, but invest in tools and resources that can aid in identifying, assessing, and managing risk. This could include software, external consultant, or other specialized resources. You cannot say, tell that you have a strong risk management culture if you don't invest in anything for that, if you don't invest in an appropriate tool like a software, <laughs> if you do doing loose risk management culture in the spreadsheets just or in, in boards in your company. So okay, where is the comment? Where is centralized? The, the, where do you centralize the information? Mm, you need to invest. And now, yes, finally, last but not least, 12, monitoring and reporting. And um, we, we learned this about in the 
first classes of this risk management school in English about, okay, you need to monitor and report regularly on risk management efforts. This helps in maintaining oversight, ensuring accountability, and continuously refining the risk management approach. And 13, stakeholder engagement. Engage with both internal and external stakeholders to get a comprehensive view of risks. External parties can offer unique perspective on risks that internal parties might not see. Uh, we, we saw that in the assessment of the third party consultant to assess uh, risks and controls. That's very important. And remember, creating a string risk culture is not a one time activity. It requires continuous effort, refinement, and commitment. So, I also want to share with you uh, with the uh, another framework from the IRM, IRM risk culture aspect. So, it, they say that they are four main aspects, each with two elements. So, this is like a resume or a, a more simple way to understand the, the 13 that I just gave you. So, one, tone at the top, risk leadership, clarity of decisions, how organization responds to bad news. Two, governance, clear accountability for, man for managing risks, transparency, and timelines of risk information. Three, decision making, well informed risk decisions, and appropriate risk taking, reward, and performance management linked to risk talking, taking. And for competency, studies, resourcing, and empowerment of risk function and risk skills, the embedding of risk management skills uh, uh, across the organization. The diagram looks something like this. So at the top, risk leadership dealing with bad news. Or your company dealing with bad news? What do you do? That will be a main question to ask. What is the governance? What is the accountability, the, the transparency? You share the information. You, you take informed risk decisions, you reward what your team are doing, and what are the skills and resources that you have. So I, I really like this diagram. Uh, again, this is from the IRM report. So I think this is also very helpful. So my uh, personal uh, approach and simple uh, thing is a specific tool. What is the sign that you are a very good risk management culture to, to start with? Do you have any specific tool? Do you have the resources to do that? Uh, you come, everyone in your company have access to, to that tool and to that risk management resources. A very interesting, and I think my favorite uh, indicator or metric of a risk management culture is what are the events report of your company? Everyone in your company is making events report. It is available for everyone in the company or is just one or two people? Uh, how many reports do you have? So, and some of the clients say, oh, no, no, no. If we have a lot of reports is that we, if we, if we, if we're doing bad, and it's not necessarily because I think events always happen. The, the main question is, do you report those events and you learn from those reports? Because if you don't report the events that are happening, maybe you don't give yourself the opportunity to talk about it, to learn what failed or to learn what works. So this is very important. Uh, how many events do your company reports? And do you have uh, roles and responsibilities? Do you understand the three lines of defense? Uh, and in this specific framework, the risk area is a police officer that is saying no to everything in the company or they are a partner that helps the operation line to go to 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 achieve the goals and one of the most important again communication talk about it do you have a risk committee do you have a meeting to talk about what are you 
learning or what are the things that you uh, learn about the rigs? Uh, what rigs did you take? What rigs did you mitigate? What controls were best or failed? And I don't know if everyone in the in the in the attendees knows the concept of the three lines of defense. You can put it in the chat if you if you care about it uh, or not. Uh, so uh, the three lines of defense is uh, uh, also a very interesting framework that that understand that the risk management is not a uh, uh, is not just a responsibility from the risks and compliance area. You know, uh, the the first line of defense is the operation areas. Any the the area that knows, I mean, human resources knows better the risks of human resources process than a risks and compliance area. So the first line of defense will be the operation, the sales team, the man marketing, the technology, the human resources, the administration. They need to be aware of risks. They need to be aware of the concepts, of the definitions. And then the second line of defense will be the risks and compliance areas that help the operation area, the first line of defense to understand, okay, maybe, okay, you you have the specific knowledge of your area or of your, yeah, or your team, but, oh, have you seen this different approach or what do you think about this uh, uh, experiment of this area? So the risks and compliance uh, area or team should be a partner, should, should make questions. It's like the, I don't know, the, the therapist of the first line of defense. And then we have the third line of defense that is the internal audit that is more uh, independent and to definitely see what's going on after the first two lines talk and define. So do you have these specific uh, three lines of defense? Because as the name says, it's if the first line of defense fails or miss something, will be the second line to, to support. And then will be the third line. So in this, we are very shield about risk management. So uh, there is a question in the chat, that how often do we need to do risk management? That's a very good question. And the answer is every time because I don't know what is for you risk management. So maybe okay, we can declare what are the risks of the company, or are the or what are the processes, and what are the controls. Maybe once in, uh, at the beginning of the year. So, but the management is okay. Do we have events reported, and do you have events reported every day or every week, uh, and do you manage the event report? So. Or how often do you re-score re the, the rating of the rigs or the strong of the control? So this is something that you need to do. Let me go back. Continuous effort, refinement, and commitment. We need to a continuous improvement of the risk management. Do you have the first definitions, but then you need to work on that every time. I mean, you, you're not going to be re-rate re or reassess a risk every day. Of course, you, you, you should not. But if the, if the environment of the context changes, you need to uh, act accordingly. So maybe it will be good to, to go to the practice uh, part of the risk management school in order to have this a, a little bit more clear. But... Just to close uh, about the risk culture thing is a powerful risk culture does not mean eliminating or reducing all the risk. You, 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 it's not about, okay, no, I have a strong culture because not even is reported in the last year. 
mm, I don't know if that's a, a, a very strong risk culture, because again, risk cannot be eliminated. You cannot eliminate all the risks that you can face. A risk management culture is not about eliminating all those risks. Uh, it is necessary to take risks if we want to achieve profitability or growth or, or thrive or whatever. Risk culture accepts mistakes as long as they are used as learning tools. So the key is to manage risk, to find the balance between taking risks and controlling them. So a risk culture is when we give yourself the opportunity to talk about this with the first line of defense, with the operating people, with the every leader in the company. What are the risks that you are taking? What are the risks that you're going to mitigate this week? What risks are you going to avoid? What controls are working? What risks do we take and we fail? And what we learn from that? That is a risk management culture. So let's go to see how we can translate this into uh, a specific tool, because remember one of the tip was tools and resources. Invest in tools and resources that can help you with this. Because again, these 13 tips are very useful, but okay, how can we start? Or, I mean, again, this framework is very helpful as well, but how can we start? Yeah, definitely. Alberto says the risk culture is the umbrella of the risk management completely. That's a very, very good approach, Alberto. Thank you very much. So we're going to see how we, uh, we can translate this into a specific tool. Uh, so let's go on, we, we're going to interact with Pirani. Remember that Pirani is right now the global leader in operational risk management. We have a lot of badges that. Uh, that say so like easy to use the usability or whatever so uh so is oh this a, a comment from thurman if it is isn't obvious i'm loving this had no idea about risk culture and it also makes a lot of sense so thank you thank you thurman for that the comment thank you very much uh, yeah definitely i mean Look, my position. I am the CEO of a risk management software company, and my purpose, my personal purpose, that it translates to my company is, again, I always say this to my team. A company can have the Lamborghini of risk management software, the best. Uh, and I, I was talking about best software, but <laughs> these badges means nothing in a software that you buy if your company don't have risk management culture, unfortunately. So I can have the easiest to use software, the best uh, infrastructure, and we can have uh, multiple clients globally. But if those clients don't have a risk management culture, they won't be succeed, they won't be successful in doing risk management. And that's why in Pirani, we made the risk management school. Uh, we have a lot of efforts, the podcasts, the blog posts, the webinars, the eBooks, the risk management study, because it's not enough, the software. We need to help companies to understand the best, practice, best practices, uh, concepts, and this is another aspect that I don't put this uh, specific and this big. Sometimes we want to train the, the cashier in McDonald's or the marketing people with specific concepts of risk management that are too technical. And they say, oh my God, this is so boring. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, so we need the, in those education and learning and on training uh, aspects, we need to talk their language. They, they, we need to talk as, as they talk. We need to speak in simple concepts with uh, simple examples or examples that resonate with their day-to-day. Day. Uh, 
for instance, we, we or we have a webinar next week that with Mike Clayton, that is uh, also a person that I admire a lot about the first steps on risk management. So you need to translate those concepts, that are very technical concepts, in into their every everyone language and everyone uh, uh, concepts. So no, no, no. We need to go to the to the to the <laughs> to the software in order to, to try to understand how we can uh, take advantage of a tool or the resources to to improve the risk management culture. So one of the another thing that I want to 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 put in the software to improve uh, the risk management culture is you know that most of the software charge per user. Okay, if okay, you you're gonna buy that the software and you only have two users or three users and no more. So, how do you want to achieve a strong risk management culture if you have to pay for every user that have that going to use your software of your platform? So, if you're already using spreadsheets or Excel to do risk management, and then somebody tell, telling you that you need to buy a software and you need to pay for every single person that use the software. How you how, how is your encouraging risk management uh, culture in your company? So that's why in Pirani we say, okay, you know what? We have unlimited users for everyone in the company. You don't have to pay any dollar for any person that you want to invite to to do anything in your in your company. So you can invite as many people as you want, as you need. You can invite all your company if you want to. You can invite your external consultant or your auditor in order that everybody can access to what is risk management. So we have another issue. So, okay, but I don't need that the cashier of McDonald's see or can edit the same information that the VP or the leader or the responsible of the process. So that's why you have responsible teams and system roles. So for instance, in Pirani, in this specific resource, and you can create, okay, I'm going to create the marketing team or I'm going to create the customer success or the cashier's team that they have a visibility that or something that is relevant for them and they can see all the risks, but they cannot evade the risks, right? Uh, or maybe I want that the human resources team have access to the human resources processes and risks, but the, I don't want that they have access, I don't know, the administrative or the VPs. So you can do that as well in Pirani. And also you can have different roles. Uh, so I, maybe I have operators, I have tests, I have people that only can read the information that but they cannot edit it or change the information. So this is a very uh, uh, useful thing for, for that. And I think this is, seems very obvious, but a lot of softwares or risk management tools are very, I'm sorry to say that, outdated or boring or like very technical or I don't know, like from the 90s. So you need to, it is better if you want that everyone in the company try and understand uh, what is going on with the rigs. So it's, it's, it's very important that the platform or the interface is friendly and easy to use because if you try to teach them technical concepts and then you trying to put those those concepts in a very technical or difficult to use platform, they won't never use it. They say, no, 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 I don't want to do that. So please ensure that you have a, a, a tool or a software that is easy to use that, I don't know, have colors uh, I, that give them very clear information on what they're dealing with. What is the risk heat map? How it works? Where is the risk of your company? How, what is the risk that are you uh, mitigating or what are the risks that you accept? 
Uh, and another aspect was the, I told you that, and, and a specific metric that I like the most in, the, in my clients and a lot of companies that I know is how many events do you have? How many events are you reporting on an everyday basis? Is because you don't have events at all? Or is because you're not aware of the events that can happen to you? So, for instance, we have a, this events report that in this example, as you can see, we have more than 2,000 events. We are making it easy for everyone to report the events that are actually happening and do you is your software or is your tools is are making easy for the people in your company to make those reports in an easy way for instance in pirani we can because maybe okay we'll say okay everyone in the company should make a report Maybe the cashier in McDonald's should make a report of uh, some a client get violent. So how they can make that report? They need to log in into the software in the in the in the cash. What about if you have a mobile app to do those report only to make the report and the mobile devices okay i i am the cashier of mcdonald's and i just have a violent client that i don't know broke uh, a glass or tried to be a uh, violent with me whatever so why if you have the possibility that they can make the report this is an operational risk and okay this is the the, the name of the report violent a uh, client again this this is a report that he's uh, making from the from the cell phone. Maybe they can take a picture of what happened. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture of just what happened. This happened in this specific time. I realize, and that's it. This is just one form to make that report. And I'm gonna, oh, what did this say? Okay, cash of McDonald's and in for another day. <laughs> and I'm gonna send the report. And make, I want to report another event. So do you have this easy to report tool or resources? This is very important. <laughs> exactly. Thurman, they should be able to do it from their phone. Yeah. I mean, I, I show you that in Pirani, you can actually that, do that report from the phone uh, because I, I'm sharing my, my, my screen from that. So look that in, in the software, in real time, I'm going to see, okay, the violin client report from the, the cashier or the operator. And do you have this? Fear of friction to do these reports. So, are you encouraging all or your collaborators or employees to do the reports? And most important, once you have the report, are you doing something with this? Because okay, I had the violent client incident in, in, in the in a specific uh, McDonald's. Okay, so there are why well, the prioritize. I want to assign this in for, for anyone in the team. And then I can track, oh, oh okay, I, what is the losses? Okay, that person, uh, I don't know, broke some, I don't know, some advertising or broke or hurt one of the P, one of the employees or something. Uh, and I can put, okay, I, I lost like $2,000. I can put an operating account and add. And I can track the recovery. Okay, I, I have an insurance company that give me one of the uh, pay me insurance, pay me like five hundred dollars uh, for this specific event. And now we have the information that we have losses for two thousand, recoveries for five hundred, and I can associate this specific event 
with may, do you have do you have the track of violence in the on the offices or violence in the in the stores do you have track the streets oh maybe i'm not so maybe you going to create the risk in your risk uh, heat map or maybe i ask i'm going to associate any specific uh, i i i don't have this specific or i don't know maybe this is impacting the employee well-being i mean what is the affectation of their cashier um maybe uh, i don't know maybe it's product contamination i don't know i can associate as many risks i i have and i can associate this specific event with controls what are the controls that i that i have to to prevent that from happening or to mitigate that from happening oh i don't have any control so you're going to create the control what is the event is associated with what process of my company so once you have the events report easy for everyone this is the main again this is very important to do risk management and not just ah i have 10 rigs identified in my company what's happening with those rigs what's happening and then you have the reports because okay maybe you're going to see the report of the company because also the board and the i don't know the ceo want to know okay what what are we winning with for doing risk management okay let, let me show you i i have losses from almost five million dollars because of the process of delivering food so maybe we can see how we can improve the controls in this specific process to not lose to not lose this money you know oh okay we have also a uh, losses from uh, an, an another uh, rigs or a specific a uh, uh, processes or rigs so you can manage and improve the controls or at least to be aware of those rigs that are happening to you so okay let me check the chat again they should be able to do it on the phone yeah, yeah, yeah. so event doesn't graduate to a rigs instead of read get associated to this it's, it's 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 both it's in in both ways maybe when you declare that or oh, what are the rigs that are happening to my company so again this is a this is the first step when you are identifying the context of your companies okay you this is there are all the risks that i that i think that my company may face but then the events are the materialization of those risks so maybe when you have an, an event happening you can associate easily with a risk in order to say okay this and maybe maybe i don't know let's make uh, an example maybe okay human errors and negligence and maintenance maybe i declare that risk the likelihood was likely this is my first approach when i declare that risk this specific risk i put this is likely and then we're gonna saw we're gonna see the the events report and we have a human error report every day what do you think we should do with that information you can put it in the chat initially initially i say okay this specific risk is likely but then i saw the event report and every day we have a human error so this give me these events are giving me information exactly that i need to re-score and put that is almost certain or very likely this is risk management. Risk management is not just declare something that can happen. It's monitor and report what's actually happening. Or maybe you have events report that are not associated with any risks. So what you gonna what you have to do? Okay, maybe I never saw that risk. So I need to create that specific risk because I have events reported from that specific risk so as as again there are companies that thinks that events report is that is bad oh no 
my company is too bad because I, 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 I have a lot of events report. No, it's very good because maybe before the report, you have the events, but you never report it. But when you start to report those events, you start learning from those events and those reports. And you give yourself the opportunity to talk about it and to learn about it, to rescore the risks or to be aware of the losses of your company from a specific risk on a specific process of a specific event. So uh, it, it would be good if you don't if you if you miss the class of events report, we have a specific class of report events. So uh, it will be very helpful to to, to, to to see that the whole idea of events report. But this is basically what we have. And we also have action plans. Again, what are you learning? What are you trying to improve? You are rescore on a specific risk or you want to improve the strain on a specific control. So in the software, you, you, you need to, to create action plans in order to mitigate that and have a very risk, sorry, strong risk management culture. Uh, how are your indicators or key process indicators or key risk indicators are evolving? So this is basically what you can do in a software like Pirani uh, in order to improve uh, your risk management culture. So in order to be respectful for your time, I think I, I talk a lot. <laughs> it's 9.40. It's, yeah, it's, we have two minutes. So I don't know in, until this, do you have any questions to, to close, uh, Stephanie? Yep. Well, thank you so much, Alejandro, for you know giving us that awesome explanation of risk management culture um, and showing us how it's practical in the Pirani portal and the tool. So thank you so much for that. I hope everyone enjoyed um, you know watching Alejandro explain everything. And if you have any questions regarding um, any of the material that he went over today or any questions about the portal as well. Um, sorry, I saw a question. Where where is the event reporting class? Um, I guess uh, we let will me show figure you. that out. Yeah. Uh, let me show you in real time. If you go to to our website, you can go to Academy and Risk Management School. You can have you can subscribe for the next classes. So, for instance, in two weeks we're gonna talk about oh make a risk management matrix, but in the last part of the you can saw all the uh, previous risk management school. So we have the class four is how to register events for proper risk management. And this is also a very recommended <laughs> risk management school that is the class five that continues improvement through action plans and assessment. So you can see all this information. And also, also we have a YouTube channel that you can also subscribe. You can subscribe from, for your YouTube channel. We, actually, we have two YouTube channels. Uh, we have one in, in Spanish, but we also have a, a, a YouTube channel just for the English speaking community. So we all, you also have a lot of the, all the previous uh, videos from the, we have a uh, short videos about the specific things. But we also have the the recording of the previous risk management school. So how to register events for proper risk management is also available on your English YouTube channel. So okay. No, we don't have certifications for this because this is open content. And yeah, we, no, we don't have certifications. Yeah. Okay, so is one hour already so thank you very much thank you very much stephanie and thank nicole uh, in the backstage <laughs> <laughs> and I, I i hope i uh, uh, let me no let me just invite you for our next event again i mean you should you should be in this event with mike layton i mean this this guy is amazing he has a lot of knowledge so in next tuesday we're gonna have a first steps in risk management so please if you can please join us in this event and in two weeks we have another uh, class of risk management school with ernesto 
uh, about the risk management matrix. So I hope to see you there in either of these events. So thank you very much. Hope thank to see you. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Bye.